Now let's talk about Tesla's cost of ramping the Cybertruck production. As I mentioned in one of my earlier reports, Tesla Cybertruck ramp is impressive. But now I'm learning that it comes at a cost. I hope Tesla is able to clean up these issues and have this vehicle eventually recognized as good quality electric pickup truck. There is a lot of interesting new technology there that will be great to see in future Tesla vehicle programs. But Tesla needs to fix these current issues that are costing its run. Now, Tesla is about to finish its first full quarter of Cybertruck production and it looks like it has made some great progress, right? It has been hard to track Cybertruck production and drone flyovers have been the primary way to track it. You have seen me sharing some drone flyover images that you can see like there are 100 Cybertrucks, 300 Cybertrucks on the parking lot of Giga Texas. A new drone flyover of Tesla Gigafactory Texas by Brad Sloan showed hundreds of Cybertrucks at multiple locations around the factory, including some being loaded on trucks for deliveries to customers. It looks like Tesla is getting closer to producing 1,000 Cybertrucks per week, which would be an impressive ramp for the first quarter of production. Do you agree that 1,000 Cybertrucks per week is impressive so far? But volume is one thing, quality is totally another thing, friends. Tesla is having issues with its early Cybertruck units which is not something completely unusual for a new vehicle program. Keep this in mind, please, because I'm not criticizing Tesla Cybertruck, but saying it's not unusual. Uh, Electric has talked to two recent Cybertruck buyers who had complete vehicle failures in their first week of ownership. They both had the rare motor fail. I will have the link uh, in the comments. Uh, they were told by Tesla service that it is fairly common problem that is creating a backlog in parts. The customers were told that it would be a few weeks before Tesla could perform the repairs on their Cybertrucks. Even the Cybertruck that MKBHD Twitter user reviewed had a significant door gap defect which CEO Elon Musk confirmed was a known issue. This was in a tweet and I will have that in the description of this video as well for your reference. Some Cybertruck owners have questioned the statement that it is an easy fix or at least that it will result in a quick experience at service centers as several Cybertruck owners report that their vehicles are in service for longer than in their garages. Now, I like Cybertruck and I have seen the Cybertruck in person in Charlotte Tesla Center where I live. Some of you may remember my video report on that. You can look at that in my Talk News YouTube channel, friends. And it is fairly normal for any vehicle program from any automaker to have issues early in the production process. But I think it's also fair to say that Tesla, due to its nature, has more issues with Cybertrucks. In my opinion, Cybertrucks build quality issues highlighted here are completely unacceptable at any price point, never mind this price point. The fact that Tesla acknowledges the issue and yet is willing be allowed the vehicle to leave the factory and be delivered to customers is, I don't know, is it, it looks like unforgivable, at least that's what one commenter said. For better or worse, Tesla moves a lot faster than any other automaker I know, uh, and I can't say if this is a fact or no, some people say this is a fact. It enables it to bring vehicle programs to production faster and bring changes to its vehicles faster. For example, it doesn't wait for few for new model years to bring improvements to its manufacturing uh, system. However, it also means that things can fall between the cracks and things like we are seeing now with the Cybertruck happen. There are pros and cons to everything. Having said this, I believe that people who are the early buyers of Cybertruck, who are the early buyers of any vehicles, are kind of I don't know if I should say brave people because, you know, they kind of take it upon themselves. Uh, I personally like, and I write that in my reviews, hey, be patient, wait for the second year model to come because the car companies will improve because we humans are fallable. You would have to take that into consideration. But these people who are buying them, you know, I give them also credit because I don't know if they buy out of you know, not being patient or they that's why they pay maybe $250,000, $300,000 
to their cyber trucks or if they buy because they want to help the industry uh, anyway uh, it helps everyone because then they identify the problems in the earlier model vehicles whether it's tesla cyber truck or another car company and then this helps the car companies to improve and they are responsibly servicing these cars taking them you know it's okay their cars stay in the service center a little bit longer than they're in their garages initially but that helps us everyone so let me know your thoughts in the comment section friends what do you think about this report and about say, tesla cyber trucks build issues are they unacceptable or so far so good Tesla now sets the record straight once more about Giga Berlin's water consumption. Welcome back everyone. This is Armin Harayan from TorqueNews.com. Tesla Giga Berlin in Brandenburg is already dubbed as the company's most sustainable and efficient facility, but it still attracts a consistent stream of opposition. Among the most notable arguments against Tesla Giga Berlin is the facility's water consumption, which critics have alleged is dangerously high. Tesla, for its part, has been doubling down on its efforts to set the record straight about Giga Berlin's water usage. In comments to RBB24, which is Brandenburg's public radio, Tesla external project leads Theresa Egler provided an overview of the facility's water consumption as well as the technologies that the EV maker employs to ensure that the factory could recycle as much water as possible. The Tesla employee highlighted that Giga Berlin recycles almost all of its dirty water from car production. By doing this, Tesla is able to use far less water than originally planned. We managed to recycle up to 100% of all of our processed water waste here, she said. Alexander Riederer, who works at Tesla's Public Policy and Business Development Division, also highlighted that Giga Berlin is one of Germany's largest wastewater treatment plants. We have one of the largest industrial wastewater treatment plants in Germany here. There is only one larger one, which is a nuclear power plant, he said. That's how efficient Tesla is with water at Giga Berlin, friends. Tesla Giga Berlin is a huge facility and thus it was approved to use 1.8 million cubic meters of water per year. However, Tesla currently uses less than 500,000 cubic meters of water annually. A large part of this water consumption is actually just used for the sanitary facilities of Giga Berlin's 12,500 employees. Thus, despite its larger size and current vehicle output, Giga Berlin only uses about 4% of total water volume of the Water Association WSC. We actually have one of the most efficient automobile factories in the world here in terms of water consumption, Reader stated to RBB24. While there is a notable amount of noise surrounding Giga Berlin's water consumption, it is important to note that the facility that produces so many cars consumes far less water than other industrial plants in the area. As per the Brandenburg Ministry of the Environment, the Joshualde power plant uses 44.9 million cubic meters of water every year, and the waste recycler EEW in Premitz uses 23 million cubic meters of water annually. Even the Kleisto Asparagus Tarm uses 1.1 million cubic waters per year, more than twice the amount of water used at Tesla Giga Berlin. You see these numbers? Granted, Giga Berlin is situated in a water protection area, but it should be noted that Mercedes-Benz also operates a factory in Ludwigsville that is built in a water protection area. That factory employs 2,000 workers and has an output of about 50,000 sprinters per year, and it has been operational since the early 1990s. The Mercedes-Benz facility also consumes less than 100,000 cubic meters of water per year. With this in mind, Tesla already uses far less water per vehicle in Giga Berlin, not as per the RBB24, the Mercedes-Benz factory has not attracted any protests about its consumption or possible dangers today. You see, how can this be possible? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section, friends. This is Armin Haryan from TorqueNews.com. Give us thumbs up if you found this report interesting and share in social media. I would greatly appreciate it. Have a great day. See you soon in our next report.